What's up, y'all? It's your man, Stephen Bardo, coming at you with another edition of the Flying Illini Report. This is where I go a little bit in depth with the Flying Illini men's basketball team, and I give some expert analysis on what I think their games will look like coming up this week. This is a weekly edition. And so this week, only one game, not a, not a heavy load for the Illini. Uh, they had a game postponed with Michigan State that was scheduled this past Saturday that did not take place. And so from their last victory, Illinois' last victory over Penn State, until they meet Iowa on Friday, they will have 10 days without a game. So there could be some concern there, but I think this can be a silver lining. Uh, this could be a blessing in disguise for the Illini. Uh, the Illini were having issues starting games correctly. They have been inconsistent on both ends of the floor. It seems like um, Coach Underwood is still trying to find that right mix of who to start and who to bring off the bench. I think Andre Curbelo is starting to get a little bit more consideration for starting as opposed to coming off the bench. You've got Grandison who uh, I believe started in place of maybe DeMonte Williams against Penn State. So there's a few things going on. And I think those that are worried about rust, I think should be less concerned about the rust aspect and be more um, excited about the possibility of the Illini being able, able to shore some things up that they need to address. And so this is a huge matchup, obviously. Iowa will come in as the number one off offensively uh, offensive efficiency team in the nation. So Iowa has the best offense in the nation, even with the 81 69 defeat that they suffered in their last game at home versus Indiana. They're still the number one offense in the nation, according to Ken Palm.com. And so this is a tremendous test for the Illini. This is a wonderful test, in my opinion. If you want to be considered one of the best, like I think this, this fight Illini team does, then you need to go up against the best. And Iowa certainly is one of the best teams in the country. So when you look at Iowa, you have to look at attacking Luca Garza. How do you do this? Well, Luca Garza is such a unique talent. He can shoot the three. He can put it on the deck. He's an underrated passer. He's uh, one of the best post players in, in the country. And so he provides a lot of matchup issues. So when you go back and look at teams that have defended him well, I look at the first matchup that Northwestern had at Iowa. They held uh, Luca Garza to 19 points. And what they did was Pete Nance was playing the five position. So Pete Nance went off offensively, had a great game offensively. I believe he had like 15 in the first half, but he only had two in the second half. And so what Northwestern did, first you have to make Garza play defense because he's not going to foul. He'll play good position defense, but what Garza does, he goes straight up. So he doesn't want to get in foul trouble. So whoever Garza is checking, you got to be offensively aggressive. You got to make him play defense because again, as I said, especially if he's guarding the post player, and I was not coming to help, and Garza was playing one-on-one -on -one defense, you can score on him. Now, I was smart. They're not going to put – I don't necessarily see Garza – if Garza's going to go against Kofi Coburn heads up, then Iowa will help. But Iowa does a lot of things defensively that they try to disguise what they're doing. So if Garza starts on Kofi Coburn, which it, the likelihood of it is there, they could put, put Jack Nungy – to start on um, Kofi. They could do that. But if Garza is going to guard Kofi, watch for Iowa to, to double on the pass, to double on the catch, to double when Kofi starts to put it on the deck. They're going to give him multiple looks to try to keep him off balance. And so for Illinois, when you're guarding Garza, one of the first things you want to do, make him play defense. That's one. Two, you want to do the same thing that I anticipate the Hawkeyes are going to do to Kofi Coburn. You want to do the same thing to Luca Garza. You want to put different defenders on him. You want to double team him at different times. As the pass is coming, as soon as he, you know, on the pass, go and double team him. 
when he catches it, go and double team it. When he catches and starts to put it on the deck, run somebody at it. Then when he catches, he starts to put somebody on the uh, put, starts to put it on the deck. Have whoever's the nearest guard or the nearest wing player dig in. Don't double, just dig in. Bother his dribble. Act like you're coming and 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 play cat and mouse. You've got to keep Luca Garza off balance if you're going to keep him from hitting you for 30, 35 points. Because if you play him straight up, or if you give him the same look every time, he's going to kill you. Because that's just how good he is. So you make Garza play defense. Then you double team him different ways. And you try to keep him off the free throw line. I know that that's those are very difficult tasks, but that's what you have to do against Luca Garza if you're going to have success against Iowa. Because with Iowa, you have to pick your poison. Now, C.J. Frederick went out last game in the second half against Indiana with an uh, injured ankle. He's had ankle problems throughout his career. Um, I anticipate him being ready because, uh, like Illinois, has a long layoff before this, this Iowa game. Iowa will have had eight days of rest before coming into Champaign to face the fighting Illini. But C.J. Frederick is a key piece. So when you look at Iowa, Jordan Bohannon is not going to go 0 for 9 like he did against Indiana last game. That's not going to happen. That's an aberration. So Bohannon's going to come back, and he's going to be really fired up to play better. C.J. Frederick will be fired up to come back off this injury to make sure that he's healthy, but he's going to be aggressive. Joe Wieskamp is always aggressive, right? And then uh, Murray coming off the bench is a handful Nungie's long. You've got to pick your poison against this Iowa team. So, in my opinion, how the Illini beat Iowa? Throw the kitchen sink at Garza. Do not let Garza get comfortable. Make him work for his offense. Keep him off the offensive glass. Now, you're talking about Kofi Coburn getting the start on Garza. Hey, if, 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 I'm, if I'm Brad Underwood... And I'm, I'm trying to tell Kofi Coburn how to guard Garza. You know what? If he's at the three, just get a hand up. And if he, if he kills us on the three, he kills us on the three, right? So have Kofi, in my opinion, spend more time concerned about his defense in the post and getting help defenders. Because as on, when you're on the perimeter and Garza catches on the perimeter, just be on the catch and put your hand up. Don't worry about trying to corral him on the perimeter. He's not going to break you down off the balance all the way to the, to the rim. But if you're Kofi Coburn, it's going to be a different feel. But when Garza slips out on the perimeter, you got to be there on the catch and just have your hand up. That's all you can do. If he beats you with an open three, with, with a three in his face, with a hand in his face and he hits a three, that's all you can do. So those are Kofi's instructions. When Georgie Bashanis Vili gets his crack, I want George to be a little bit more aggressive. I think George is quicker. I think he's a better defense. He's a better overall defender than Kofi. I would like to see Georgie try to deny guards as much as possible. Three quarter front, half front, swing to the other side, full denial, full front, have some help on the backside. I think Georgie can give guards a lot of different looks, right? And then overall, uh, defensively for the Illini, if the ball comes into Garza and you double, your rotations have to be spectacular coming out of that double because that's what Iowa does best. Garza catches, he senses a double team, he will kick it out quick, and they swing that ball around the perimeter as well as any team in the country. That's why they have the number one offense in the country. So it's going to be a tall task for the Illini. But I think they can give, with, with the Illini's lineup, with Coburn, Bashanis Vili, I believe Granderson should get a crack at it. I'm sure DeMonte Williams will slide down in some defensive switches, switching situations. He'll have a, a crack at it. There's going to be a lot of guys that are going to switch off on Garza that will get a crack at him. So just give him a lot of different looks and be very sound on your defensive rotations coming out of the double team. I would prefer... Instead of double teaming on the same side, I would prefer to have the second weak side defender, not the strong side defender, but the second weak side defender. So if Garza's in the post on the right block, 
come from the top of the key and double team. Don't come from the same side because guards is too good. He sees it double come from the same side. He hits that's too far from the for the uh, weak side defender to rotate and try to get a hand up. The, the rotation is bad. I would say double from the top of the key. Double down. You stay strong on the strong side ball, and then you rotate on the weak side. That would be ideal to me. Okay. Also, when Bohannon is in the game, when Jordan Bohannon is in the game, if I'm Brad Underwood, I attack him. His foot speed is not is he's he's got average foot speed, but if he gets switched out on a Corbello. Uh, on a Io DeSumo, I, I'm sure Fran McCaffrey will try to keep Bohannon off Io as much as possible. But there will be some times when Bohannon is switched on Io. When Illinois sees that, they need to break whatever play they're doing. Let Io go one on one. Try to get him aside. Try to run him into the post, even. But go at Bohannon because if Bohannon's off the floor, that's one. That's one of the deadlier shooters in the Big Ten. You want to occupy him as much as you can. You want to put him in defensive positions where he's got a guard, get fouls on him, get into his legs. Because if Bohannon can sit back and be a weak side defender, he doesn't have to do a whole lot. He's not, he's not asked to corral defensively. He's going to eat, he'll eat the line eye up just like he eats everyone else up. If you don't make him play defense, Indiana made him play defense. Uh, Aljami Durham, Rob Fennessy went at Bohannon. And they got into him. They didn't allow him a lot of space. They got up in him. That's how you have to guard Bohannon. You have to make him uncomfortable, get him inside of the three-point line. Because if he's catching and shooting from the three, he's going to kill you. So, so get, make him uncomfortable, make him play defense. And be solid on everybody else. Because to me, if Garza is underneath, if Garza is under 25 points, and no one else goes off for a career game, then you that's how you beat Iowa. I don't think you can take Garza away and then let everyone else beat you and beat Iowa. Garza's too good at the college level. College defenders aren't smart enough to figure out how to stop Garza. It's just not, they, they just don't have enough basketball experience. Um, in my opinion, there's not enough athletes like Big 12, Big 12 teams would have a much better time defending Garza than Big 10 teams do because Big 12 has different athletes that could give Iowa some different looks. The Big 10 doesn't have that those type of athletes, in my opinion. Have good athletes, but not elite athletes like the Big 12. So when you look at that and you're looking at trying to guard Iowa from a Big 10 standpoint, from Big 10 teams standpoint, outside of Michigan, I think everybody else you have to kind of limit Garza and hold everybody else in check. I don't think you can say, okay, we're going to cut Garza off and then go give Bohannon, CJ Frederick, Joe Wieskamp career games because they can sting you for career games. I think you gotta, you got to focus on Garza, but you can't let everybody else kill you. And Illinois has the ability to do that. So I think that's the key. You notice I didn't say anything about Illinois on offensive end because I was a uh, Iowa's a, a average defensive team. They're not a great defensive team. You can score on them. So offense is not going to be an issue for the Illini in this matchup against the Iowa Hawkeyes. It's going to be all defensive predicated. All right. Iowa does a decent job on the glass. I think Illinois can win the glass battle, the rebounding battle. And if Illinois can take care of the basketball, because what Iowa will do, they'll play a little man, but they play a, a, a lot of zone. And then they do some three-quarter court pressure. They, they, they try to give you different looks to keep you off balance. As long as the Illini can take care of the, their, the basketball, not spray it all over the place and have a bunch of turnovers, they can play solid defensively. I think they can beat Iowa. I really do. But it's a tall task. It's going to have to be one of their better defense, team defensive efforts all season. But I think they have the personnel and the depth that they can give Iowa problems. We've seen it from Northwestern in their first matchup, even though Iowa won that game. We saw it against Indiana. Keep this in mind. Geronimo and Hunter came in off the bench in the decisive run where they held 
in, uh, they held the Hoosiers held the Hawkeyes scoreless for 11 minutes. This is not going to happen probably again in the Big Ten. But what I did notice was that when Geronimo came in the game, he's 6'6". Hunter's 6'7". They were much quicker than Garza. So they were able to give him different looks. They were able to front, three-quarter court, side, 50% denial. They were able to give him a lot of different looks. And it threw the Hawkeyes off. Okay? So, Georgie Bishanishvili, Grandison, uh, Hawkins. Uh, I, I think DeSumo will, will in, in certain switching situations, he'll have a, a crack at guards every now and then. But you got to be solid and you got to give him different looks. Okay? And the defensive rotations have to be stellar. I think with 10 days of, of concentrating on themselves, I think the Illini will be up for the task against the Hawkeyes, and I predict the Illini to win this game. If you like what you're seeing and you think Ill, other Illini fans would enjoy this type of content, please like, share, and comment on this on this video. I only want to get these better for you Illini fans uh, in specifically, but I think Big Ten fans would appreciate this in-depth breakdown on one particular team in the Big Ten. So like, share, hit that thumbs up, and tell other Illini fans about this because I think that they would really get something out of this in-depth uh, analysis and breakdown. If you want to be a part of, of my tribe, my, my inner group of the Bartles Breakdown Group, text me at 312-847-2739. Again, that's 312-847-2739. That's the text to be a part of the tribe. Or you can go to Bartles Breakdown Group on Facebook. There's a Bartles Breakdown page where I have the show. And there's a Bartles Breakdown Group. That's an inner group that I give, you know, picks. I'll be giving my March Madness picks. Uh, I show you kind of the behind the scenes of, you know, Big Ten Studios where we uh, broadcast the majority of the games this season because of the pandemic. When I do go on location, I try to give videos and show different things to the inner group. So if you want to be a part of this inner group, go to Bartles Breakdown Group on Facebook and ask to join. There's three simple questions. You got to give your email address. And also, if you want to be on the text group, 312-847-847. 2739. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Flying Illini Report. I look forward to talking to you guys next week and go Illini. Peace, y'all.